JSON is a 30-point system on Hack the Box that involves exploiting a .NET deserialization vulnerability and has multiple ways for privilege escalation. You can reverse a binary, exploit FTP or use the juicy potato exploit in order to become system. After running a port scan, we note a few interesting ports, 21, 80 and 445. We start by looking at the web page on port 80, which seems to require credentials to log in. Using admin admin for username and password allows us to log into the application. On loading the page, Bob shows a lot of requests. One of them is a GET request to API account and looks like a good place to start. We can see a bearer header and an OAuth2 cookie that look like some base64 encoded data. By pasting the data into Burp's decoder, we can see that it's in JSON format and includes an ID, the username, a password hash, name and role. Usually you would want to change these values around to check if we can elevate permissions, but because we are already admin, this is not required in this case. Let's see how the application behaves on a wrongly formatted payload. We can see a deserialization error occurring, which is very interesting. It tells us that the library json.net was used in trying to deserialize our payload. There's a great project on GitHub called wisoserial.net, which generates deserialization payloads for this library. As this only runs well on Windows, we switch to a Windows VM and generate a simple payload that would ping our machine back. After starting TCP dump and sending the request, we can observe that the payload worked and our box is indeed getting pinged. Now for the real payload, we will start an SMB server on our box and run netcat directly from the share in order to connect back to us with a reverse shell. After sending the payload, we wait a moment and indeed get our shell and can now read the user flag. As mentioned before, there are several ways to root the box. Here I will show how to use Juicy Potato to become system. We can see with system info that the server runs Windows Server 2012 Data Center Edition, which leads us to the Juicy Potato exploit. The example shows that we need a class ID to run the exploit that fits the operating system we are targeting. Fortunately, several class IDs are provided in the repository. After copying the exploit and netcat onto the box, I create a simple bat file that uses netcat to create a bind shell because the exploit expects a single file to be run as payload and I did not see any option to provide arguments to it. We now run the exploit with a class ID from the Windows Server 2012 list and after a moment we connect to the now open port and have indeed become system and can read the root flag. Thanks to Cyberbob for creating this box and congrats to Sampretty and JKR for getting user and root bloods.